11, Houston, the bus, uh, you still looking for that 90 degree bracket over? Uh, he is looking for it now. Roger, right, we'll have a word for you in this moment. My monitor shows a pretty good uh, clear picture from this angle. Now we found the 93 bracket. Roger, Neil. Uh, it's uh, really a super picture. We've got the ACA, your ACA, the, the good picture of the throttle, the 90 degree bracket. We see the uh, start, your handles, and uh, now over to the bracket. Back to back to position, uh, we'll be putting the camera in after the initial descent down the ladder, and it'll be taking one frame a second for uh, most of the EVA. Here's some copies out. That's a real good view of that camera. Our monitor is a little bit wavy, so it's uh, hard for us to tell when we're when we've got a steady picture for you. Eleven, we have no complaints at all. We don't see that waviness on our picture. It's just really great, over. Do the edges of the window look like straight lines to you? That's affirmative. Okay, they they don't in our monitor and. Uh, that leads us to make some uh, corrections to the camera, which probably aren't required sometimes. Eleven, we have no complaints at all. It's a magnificent picture. What was that, Buzz, you're chasing now? That was, uh, that was me picking up some, uh, particles of paint that were floating through the air in front of the camera there. Right, Neil, we got it. There's us that, uh, Neil's about to check the Velcro map there. Okay, Buzz, we see the card up now. Okay, for those of you that don't know, this is where we uh, log most of our data for each of the uh, land maneuvers. And uh, we 
have another card like this. It's the timeline book that uh, we place down on the table in front of the uh, and at display keyboard. And it's on this timeline that we have all our procedures. Uh, we obviously uh, have to hold these in place in zero G, so we make use of the Velcro patches on the back and on the table. So we can attach these down here. And then we just turn the pages over when we go to new sequences in our uh, timeline of procedures. Roger. And we're ready to copy the DOI pad. Roger, we'll have the photos work that one up for you momentarily. Eleven Houston, that was a good shot of panel two. Now we got panel three in view with the temp monitor switch. The stabilization station and control panel we see now with the mode control switches. Now over to the right of the radar. Real good. Eleven, that's real good uh, camera work. Tell me the most unusual position a cameraman's ever hit, hanging by his toes uh, from a tunnel and taking a picture upside down. Roger, well, you're doing a super job. We got a uh, good view of the cross corner there. We had a good view of the tape meter. We're giving you a picture now of the uh, floor of the cabin. I think you can see the uh, one of the two portable life support system uh, backpacks here in the center. And on each side, we have the two uh, helmet visors. I'll remove one of them and show you uh, a little closer view of what this looks like. Roger. Inside the helmet visors are the EVA gloves with the blue tips. I'll not take those out now. Right, but that's a great shot now that we're getting of the helmet, of the EVA visor, and also the, the uh, EVA gloves in the background. Okay, you did say this was going out now, didn't you? Stand by, I think so. Eleven, uh, you got a pretty big audience. It's live in the U.S., it's going live to Japan, Western Europe, and much of South America. Everybody reports very good color. Appreciate the great show. I do understand. Thank you.
Well, that was a good demonstration of your EVA advisor, uh, Emily. Appreciate it. Well, that's a good view of Mr. Collins down there. We finally see him again. Hello there, Ursley. Hello there. Uh, Eleven, Houston, we noticed uh, when you were scanning over panel two a moment ago, one and two, the uh, two eight balls were slightly in disagreement. Uh, Control said he'd like to uh, ag the line there. Yeah, well, I'm back, well, I'm saying. Problem is, we don't know uh, whether the line eggs the pink or pink's egg. Stand by. Eleven, Chris said he can tell you. What okay, case above? All right. I go home, big fella, to get back in the limb again. But, I can imagine. The uh, traverse from the bottom of the limb uh, to the uh, aft bulkhead of the command module must be about Not as disorienting one at all, but it's most interesting to uh, contemplate just pushing off from one and uh, bounding on into the other vehicle all the way through the tunnel. Roger, right, must be some experience. Is Collins going to go in and look around? We're, we're willing to let him go, but he hasn't come up with the price of the ticket yet. Right. I'd advise him to keep his hands off the switches. Yeah, right. You gotta keep your hands off my disc. You'll be a fair swap. Roger. That's why I've been eating so much today. I haven't had anything to do. He won't let me touch it anymore. Right.
Atlanta, Houston, if that's not the Earth, we're in trouble. That's the Earth, and we have a very good view of it today. There are a few more uh, cloud bands on uh, yesterday when we beat down to you, but uh, it's a beautiful sight. We have some horizontal banding in our TV monitor. Uh, are we transmitting that to you, or do you have a, a clear picture? Neil, we have a very clear picture. The only uh, thing that we see is a little white dot in the bottom of our screen, which uh, uh, is our TV guys say is a, an apparently a burned-out spot in the camera, but it should come back. Over. Roger. Uh, we have that in our monitor also. Eleven, Houston, we do have uh, three lines across our TV. I thought it was just a transmission problem, but uh, everybody's telling me now that it probably is it's on the downlink. Over. Now, those are the same three ones that uh, we have. Okay. How far are you? How are we now, Charlie? Stand by, I'll give you an exact figure. If you notice the difference between yesterday and today, this is as large an image we, as we can give you. Roger, it's distinctly smaller. Uh, you're now 177,000 miles out, over. Anything? That's a nautical mile. That's affirmative. Eleven weeks. Go ahead, over. Eleven Houston, we see the uh, still see the banding along the intertropical uh, convergence. Uh, I guess the most predominant one has around the up in the around the equator, or slightly uh, north of the equator. Charlie, I'd like to say uh, hello to all uh, my fellow scouts and scatters at uh, Farragut State Park in Idaho. They have a national jamboree there this week, and Apollo 11 would like to send them best wishes. Thank you, Apollo 11. I'm sure that uh, if they didn't hear that, uh, they will get the word uh, through the uh, news. Uh, certainly appreciate that. Eleven, Houston, we have you, uh, your spacecraft point is just off the western coast of South America, uh, directly south of, of about Mexico City, Owen. That, uh, that looks like what we observe from here. And uh, we're going to turn our TV monitor.
monitor off now uh, for a short bit while we have some other work to do. Uh, Apollo 11 signing off. Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Apollo 11, this is Houston, affirmative. We're reading you loud and clear on voice, and we have a good, clear TV picture, a little bright crater in the uh, oh, no, no, the fair. bottom of the uh, picture. I guess that's the spot on the tube. That's right, that's that one. And uh, if you could give us poo and accept, we'll uplink a new state vector and target load to you. Uh, you said a problem, but I'm not one of the larger uh, craters on the back side. I noticed a uh, small dark speck on the, uh, the outer wall. Uh, 
Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, I'm flying it in FDS minimum impulse, Houston, and uh, it's uh, rather difficult to keep it on a constant beta. The, the limb uh, wants to wander up and down. I'm not sure it responds to mass cons or what, but uh, I can get it completely stabilized in theta and uh, let it alone, and in another couple of minutes it will have developed its own rate. This is Houston, Roger. Uh, well, this is Houston. Uh, would you care to comment on some of these craters as we go by? Uh, Roger, we're um, approaching uh, the uh, approach path to uh, ignition. Uh, this is equivalent to uh, 13 minutes before ignition, and uh, we're at about 80 degrees, I guess. 
All right, we've got him. Uh, uh, it may have something to do with map guns, or it may just be the peculiarity of the disc you just played. Okay, we've observed the behavior of your disc. Uh, I think we've got the data here to work on it. Uh, let us grind around a little while on it, and we'll report back to you uh, probably in a rep or two. Okay, well, in the meantime, I'm going to pitch down uh, toward 315. Roger. Three craters, three horizontal craters that uh, you now have in the field of view are uh, immediately underneath the ground track. The right hand and the largest crater that you see is uh, to the Ajo P. Uh, Roger, we concur on the identification of that crater. <laughs> Coming up on uh, landmark Alpha One here shortly. Roger, uh, Mike having his first look at Alpha One at the present time. Yeah, it's a great uh, bright crater. It's not a large one, but an extremely bright one. It looks like a very uh, recent, and I would guess impact crater with. Uh, Ray streaming out in all directions, which uh, should make uh, my collection of foaming sea easy to see coming up on it. Now, uh, Crater Camp is one of the smaller ones out on the uh, on the floor of the foaming sea. Okay, we show you uh, over the, the Sea of Fertility now, and uh, you ought to have Langrenus uh, down south of track a few degrees, about uh, nine degrees south of track. Yeah, the crater that's in the center of the screen now is uh, Webb. Uh, we'd be looking straight down on it at about six minutes before power descent. It uh, has a relatively flat bottom. Uh, to the crater, and you can see maybe uh, two or three uh, craters that are in the bottom of it. On the uh, western wall, the wall that's now nearest to, to the uh, camera, or near the bottom of the screen, we can see uh, a simple crater just on the outside. And then coming back towards the bottom of the screen and to the left, you can see... Uh, a series of uh, depressions uh, is the type of uh, connected craters that uh, give us most uh, interest to uh, discover why they're in uh, the particular patterns that they're in. I'll zoom the camera in uh, and try and give you a little closer look at this. Roger, we're uh, observing the Dimple Crater now. Uh, the central peak that we can see on the orbit of photos doesn't seem to stand out very well here. Well, they're not central peaks, they're uh, depressions in the center. Right. And you'll notice on the uh, pitch touch activity, I, still, I put in uh, oh, a dozen uh, minimum impulses and pitch down, uh, and I'm still far from stretching back 315. We're moving the camera over to the uh, right window now to give you uh, language. It's, uh, it's uh, several central peaks. And, uh, Roger. Uh, we got Langrenus in our screen now. Okay, 
Okay, well, I mean, this is Houston. Uh, we're getting a beautiful picture of uh, Langrenus now with its uh, rather conspicuous central peak. Okay, it looks like uh, we got Seki K to Y about uh, 10 seconds ago coming up on Apollo Ridge. And then the right-hand portion of our screen right now, we can see Messier, Alpha, and Bravo with uh, the light-colored rays uh, streaming off in one direction. Thank you. 
Okay, this is uh, very close to ignition point for power to uh, just passing Mount Maryland. That's uh, a triangular shaped mountain that you see in the uh, center of the screen at the present time with the crater Seki Seda uh, on top of the far northern edge of the mountain. Roger, we're getting a good view of Mount Maryland and of Seki Seda. Roger, we're getting a good view of Mount Maryland and of Sucky Sedum. And uh, now we're looking at uh, what we call Boot Hill. There's 20 seconds into the descent. The uh, bright, sharp ribbed crater at the very right edge of the screen, Spencerina T. Now passing uh, the one minute point in our descent. Uh, Roger, and for your information, your current altitude is uh, 148 nautical miles above the surface. I'm unable to uh, determine altitude at all looking out the window. I could tell you we were down at 60 or up at 170. I'd like to get you if you were down at 50,000 feet. I would be better. Bridges here, uh, the edges of old craters that uh, were photographed by Apollo 10, and uh, those, the crew of Apollo 10 was very impressed with the steepness of these ridges when they came over them at uh, about 50,000 feet. So, Roger, we can uh, observe they're also steep even from this altitude. You've got uh, quite a shadow being cast by the sun at these low angles. considerably darker than uh, uh, the surface that we looked at uh, previously with when the sun was uh, quite high above us. The uh, crater in the right crater in the center of the screen, uh, the smaller one, is Sensorina. Uh, Roger, we show you a little over one minute from the Terminator at the present time. Uh, how's the brightness of uh, the picture you're receiving? Uh, I think we ought to open up the F-stop some as we approach the terminator. Uh, yeah, the, the brightness is still doing uh, quite well. You can go ahead and uh, open it up a stop or two. The uh, automatic light level compensation seems to be working beautifully.
to acquire the landing radar. At this point, uh, we would be unable to see the uh, surface below us until uh, getting very near the landing area. Roger, I imagine you get a uh, you get a real good uh, look at that tomorrow afternoon. U.S. Rail is the one that was referred to in Apollo 10 as Sidewinder. Good name to Sidewinder Diamondback. Looks like a couple of snakes down there in the lake bed. And we're approaching the Terminator now. See the uh, uh, draft increase, and only the sunlit side of the bridges uh, remain eliminated, while the dark sides in the shadow will become completely black. Uh, Eleven, this is Houston. The picture is getting a little grainy now. You might go ahead and uh, open up the f-stop.
Lenny, I think, believe that's where we just came from. It is, huh? Well, I'm really looking at the bad, uh, at a bad screen here. Stand by one. Hey, you're right. It's not bad enough to find the right landing spot. It's not bad enough to find the right landing spot. We're going to get the right planet. I'll never let that one down. I know there's uh, a lot of scientists from uh, a number of countries standing by to see the lunar samples, and uh, we thought you'd be interested in seeing that they really are here. Uh, these two boxes are the sample return containers. They, they are vacuum packed uh, containers that were closed in a vacuum on the lunar surface, sealed and then uh, brought inside the lamp and put inside uh, these fiberglass bags, zippered and resealed around the, around the outside and placed in these uh, receptacles in the side of the command module. These are the two boxes, and uh, as soon as we uh, get onto the ship, I'm sure these uh, boxes will immediately be uh, transferred um, and uh, delivery started to the lunar receiving laboratory. Uh, these boxes include the samples of the various types of rock, the uh, ground mass of the soil, the sand and silt, and uh, the uh, particle collector for the solar wind experiment. And uh, the core tubes that took uh, depth samples of the lunar surface. Uh, Roger, Neil. Thank you much for that description. Uh, we've got a pretty dark picture down here. Can you check your f-stop? Uh, we'd like to have it. Uh, if you could open it up a little bit, over. Okay, our monitor shows that to be very bright. Yeah, we're down around. Uh, between, well, around F4, which we thought would be plenty light. Uh, we'll lighten it up some more. Well, we'd appreciate it. It's uh, pretty dark, dark on all our monitors here. Okay, fine. That's looking a lot better now, Neil. Hey, Buzz. Well, 
Well, Evan Houston, we have an excellent picture now, over. Yeah, how do you read me, Charlie? Uh, five by now, Buzz, over. Okay. Uh, more mundane affair, out of the rest of the road, I'd like to uh, trace through a little bit for you. Development that has taken place in the uh, food department. Three holy type of a uh, drink container. And a little later, Mike will show you how the uh, water gun uh, operates with its new uh, filter to take out the uh, hydrogen. Essentially, this uh, water gun is put in, in this end and filled up this bag with water, and the uh, drink then uh, dissolves in the water, and uh, this end of the mouth feeding. Uh, likewise, we have uh, other foods that are more solid nature. You can probably see this uh, shrimp cocktail meal. This afternoon, while the two of us had uh, salmon salad. Another early development was the uh, use of bite-sized food. Eleven, Houston, uh, Buzz, you're breaking up badly. Yes, uh, Would you take your box over? All right, sir. How am I coming through now, Charlie? All right, yeah, you're very clear when you come through. It's just that your box is not uh, keying at uh, every word. Over. Okay. These bite-sized uh, objects were designed to uh, uh, remove the problem of having so many crumbs floating around in the cabin. So they designed uh, a particular size that uh, would be able to uh, go into the mouth all at once. And I think since uh, all of our experience, we've discovered that we can uh, progress a good bit further than that back to uh, some of the tight deals that uh, we have on Earth. As a matter of fact, on this flight, we've carried along these bread. And uh, along with the bread, we have uh, a uh, ham spread. And I'll show you, I hope, how easy it is to spread some ham. Five minutes here, let's see. We've discovered that uh, it is quite easy to solve our familiar with. Apollo 11, Houston, we notice the roll rate increasing. Uh, would you please uh, see if you can uh, bring that uh, down to about zero for us, so we'll be losing a high game shortly. Over. We can also use uh, zero gravity to demonstrate uh, many things that we've all learned in school. I'd like to demonstrate uh, briefly uh, how easy it is to explain the action of a gyroscope. Uh, if I spin this pan, we know that uh, according to the uh, equations of uh, uh, motion, that we would expect that if once this is given a spin, about, and has a spin axis in this direction, if we give it a particular torque, and if I, I'll do this by pushing my hands against it in this fashion once it's spinning, by the equations we can predict that if I put this torque on it, it will in fact Rotate this direction. Let's see how well this works out. And as I apply the torque this way, it's rotated this way.
Eleven Houston, it's a pretty good demonstration. Houston, up next is a little demonstration for the kids at home, all kids everywhere for that matter. Uh, I was going to show you how you drink water out of a spoon, but I'm afraid I filled the spoon too full, and uh, if I'm not careful, I'm going to spill water right over the side. Can you can you see the water slopping around on the top of the spoon, kids? That's the primary, the lava. Okay, well, as I say, I was going to show you, but... I'm afraid I filled it too far and it's going to spill over the side. I tell you what, I just, I just turn this one over and uh, get rid of the water and start all over again, okay? Okay. okay. And you can see up there we don't know where over is. Uh, one uh, up is as good as another. That really is water, though, I'll tell you. That's really not the way we drink. We really have a water gun, which I'll show you. There's the water gun. That cylindrical thing on the end of it is a uh, filter with uh, several membranes. One allows uh, water to pass, but not any gas. The other allows gas to pass, but not any water. So by routing uh, the gaseous water, which comes from our uh, tank, through this filter, we're enabled to uh, drink purified water without the gas in it, filtered water. And, uh, of course, all we do to, uh, to get it started is just pull the trigger. Sort of messy. I haven't been at this very long. It's sort of the same system that the Spaniards use to drink out of wine skins at both fights. Only I think it's even more fun. Well, be seeing you, kids. Uh, thank you from all the kids in the world uh, here in the Moker who uh, can't tell the earth from the moon. Huh? All right, just stand by one and we'll get you that earth point. Houston, I have a picture now. Uh, that's permanent. I refuse to bite on this one, though. You tell us. Okay, this is uh, should uh, be getting larger, and uh, if it is, it's uh, the place we're coming up to. Roger.
I believe sums up these feelings very nicely. We accepted the challenge of going to the moon. The acceptance of this challenge was inevitable. The relative ease with which we carried out our mission, I believe, is a tribute to the timeliness of that acceptance. Today, I feel we're fully capable of accepting expanded roles in the exploration of space. In retrospect, we have all been particularly pleased with the call signs that we very laboriously chose for our spacecraft, Columbia and Eagle. We've been particularly pleased with the emblem of our flight, depicting the U.S. Eagle, bringing the universal symbol of peace from the Earth, from the planet Earth, to the moon, that symbol being the olive branch. It was our overall crew choice to deposit a replica of this symbol on the moon. Personally, and reflecting the events of the past several days, a verse from the Psalms comes to mind to me. When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? The responsibility for this flight lies first with, with history with the giants of science who have preceded this effort. Next to the American people, who have, through their will, indicated their desire. Next to four administrations and their congresses for implementing that will. And then to the agency and industry team that built our spacecraft. The Saturn the Columbia, the Eagle, and the little EMU, the spacesuit and backpack that was our small spacecraft out on the lunar surface. We'd like to give a special thanks to all those Americans who built those spacecraft, who did the construction, the design, the test, and put their their heart and all their abilities in, into those crafts. To those people, tonight we give a special thank you. And to all the other people that are listening and watching tonight, God bless you. Good night from Apollo 11. Eleven, this is Houston. We're getting a zoom view out the window now. Apollo 11, signing off.